Good morning. Welcome to this edition of View on Africa. My name is Martin Ewi. I'm a technical coordinator of the ENACT project at the Institute for Security Studies. The ENACT project is a project uh, uh, financed by the European Union which seeks to enhance Africa's response to transnational organized crime. Our today view, VOA is going to look at the role of transnational organized crime in foiling the Nigerian header attacks, which have escalated uh, recently. What I'm basically going to do is to give you first some few points to establish the grounds for our debate uh, this morning. One is the fact that since 2016, these attacks have been increasing. The intensity has really, really escalated to, the, to an alarming rate that I believe it is time not only for Nigeria, nor for Africa in general, but the international community to pay attention to this problem. The second is that the grazers farmers problem is not a new problem in Nigeria, nor in Africa. This is a problem that has affected the whole of Africa, and to some extent, uh, it is a global problem because most societies have suffered from this for many, many years. Uh, but in Nigeria, this has been a problem since independence or even going back before. Uh, but we have seen quite a different dimension in recent uh, months. Um, the other point I want to make uh, up front is that there are two main reasons why this problem persists in Nigeria. In my view, the recent uh, motivators, the recent drivers of this problem uh, are two of them. One is the impunity that has driven this problem to the extent where we have it today. The second is that the recent drivers are really what I refer to as transnational organized crime, which means that there are certain criminal acts that motivate uh, herders or farmers to attack each other. The third point I want to make is that criminal groups, including local bandits, including terrorists, including gangs, have exploited this insecurity in Nigeria to cause uh, 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 havoc and to actually contribute uh, to the expansion of the herder attacks in Nigeria. The other uh, point I want to establish is that the government has been really inactive. Occasionally, the government will send in troops, it will send in police who have not studied the problem, they will go in and cause more havoc by killing and causing damage to property. So with this, we now know that the herders problem in Nigeria is one that deserves our attention to look at. And I'm going to look at it purely from the perspective of organized crime, which is a, an, an anger that has often been neglected by those who treat the problem. Now, what is the scale of this problem that we are talking about? To understand what uh, we really mean and why we need to be talking about the Nigeria header attacks more uh, regularly or more often in the media, is that at least 10,000 people have died from these uh, clashes in recent years. Um, some estimate put it that there are about $13.7 billion of damage uh, lost to the attacks. Cattle wrestling costs the state at least $10 million a year. This is huge. And this is uh, money that could be spent on development, could be spent on improving the lives of Nigerians, could be spent on improving the, uh, the lives, the education of many Nigerians, many of whom uh, have not benefited from the state. There is also the, the, the angle of displacement to give you the humanitarian impact of this problem is that about the minimum that have been estimated by the literature that uh, uh, is very vast is that 62,000 people have lost livelihood and this estimate came in 2016. In 2016 also, uh, the International Crisis Group, which was also corroborated by the Institute for Economics and Peace, which provides, uh, most of you will know, the uh, Peace Index, uh, and of course, the Terrorism uh, Index. Uh, now, they estimate that in 2016, uh, there were 2,500 people who were killed uh, in Nigeria due to header attacks and also 2,200 fatalities were rec recorded in 2017. This year alone, we've had 209 incidents, of which at least 1,775 people have died 
because of herder attacks in Nigeria. So this is not a small problem we are dealing with. This is a huge problem. And it's a problem that you know, Nigeria needs to, to take seriously. And of course, the, 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 the countries neighboring Nigeria, uh, I'm referring especially to the Lake Chad region, where the problem has been really regional and not a Nigerian problem. As we'll come to see that it is actually the neighborhood or the Lake Chad Basin region which you know, promote or the nature of the region itself that has really uh, facilitated you know, the growth of uh, community violence such as the Heda attacks in Nigeria. Now, this, I refer to it as a Nigerian conundrum because it is not just the Middle Belt, which many reports will, will say, or no, the, the, the northern part of Nigeria. But if you look at it in terms of numbers, there are about at least 24 states in Nigeria that are affected by the header problem. Um, uh, out of this, uh, there are five which you have heavy concentration, and this I'm referring to the Plateau State, the Kaduna, Benue, and Nasarawa State. We'll come to look at the problems uh, that these states face exactly and how uh, the uh, header attacks ha have escalated um, uh, humanitarian disaster in the region. Now, if you also look at the, 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 herder, uh, the herder attacks in 2018, you will see that April has been the heaviest mo uh, month where about 49 attacks took place, uh, and th that was followed actually by January. What we have uh, studied is that uh, as the, the rainy season uh, approaches, the attacks begin to uh, reduce. Uh, but during the dry season when, you know, there's a lot of dryness around where herders cannot find pastures, you know, and they have to move for long distances, we see that the problem becomes more recurrent. The other uh, point I want to make uh, also is that if you look at the, the number of fertilities, it has also really increased in recent years. Now, uh, April also was uh, the highest, uh, where we had about 398 uh, fertilities, and this was also followed by January, where we had 287 fertilities. I'm using the figures from the database provided by the Nigerian Watch, which is uh, a, a group that records or keeps record of uh, violent attacks in Nigeria. And I believe uh, uh, they are close to the uh, scene where they can understand the problem much better than any other uh, statistics that we see around. Now, the most affected state, uh, which I talked about, the Plateau State, the Kaduna, uh, Benue, Adamawa, Taraba, and Nasarawa. Uh, uh, the Benue State uh, really stands out with 493 attack, uh, 493 deaths of which uh, uh, from 64 attacks that were recorded. Uh, this is followed by Taraba, which has 24 attacks with 282 deaths. Uh, and Nasarawa State had 29 attacks with 216 deaths. So this again tells you that you know, the, these attacks are really concentrated in a few countries, though almost every state in Nigeria and even uh, the neighboring countries, Cameroon, Chad, uh, Benin, uh, Niger, uh, and to some extent, many have also included Ghana, where you know, the, 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 the attacks stretch to. And then if, you, if we were to look at the common triggers, what is it that often triggers these attacks to, to take place? Um, there are quite a number of them, and sometimes it could just be children playing, or it could just be out of something that no one expected. But the key ones, is cattle rustling. Now, cattle rustling is a serious problem that cut across Africa. We've seen it in East Africa. We've seen it uh, in uh, uh, Central Africa. We've seen it in West Africa a lot. Now, cattle rustling is a recurring problem where individuals go and rustle cattle from one country to another. In the case of Nigeria, we've seen a lot of cattle rustling from Nigeria, which are traffic to Cameroon, or in, in the reverse sense, also uh, cattle rustling in Cameroon traffic to Nigeria, where they find a market. There is a huge market uh, uh, for this. And we'll come to look at why this problem is really about money and not really about the problem that most people often talk about, which is climate change, which is the fact that there's uh, limited natural resources. What 
are the current triggers of this problem really have nothing to do with climate change. If climate change were to change overnight uh, and you are not able to solve some of the fundamental problems, I don't think that the herder attacks will reduce. But it's only when you tackle the root causes. Now, there is also the problem of arms acquisition. Um, the ECOWAS, uh, the Economic Community of West African States, I think two days ago estimated that there are about 10 million uh, illicit small arms and light weapons circulating in West Africa. And this is, this is huge. Uh, Nigeria alone uh, is uh, also estimated to occupy about 75% of those. So 75% of the 10 million uh, small arms and light weapons circulating in West Africa are found in Nigeria. So and therefore, one can easily understand why there has been so much violence, so much fat fatalities in Nigeria, and which, of course, uh, 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 has also benefited the uh, farmers' grazers' dispute from which we have the herder attacks that occur recently. Um, we also have banditism. I think many have talked about royal banditism, which contribute to the herder attacks. Now, the herder attacks, I, I don't want to always associate it, and I don't like to, uh, um, to read uh, those who associate uh, the herder attacks to any ethnic group or to any religion. But what we have seen is that uh, most of those who carry out the attacks uh, who are Fulanese. These are people who have a specific tradition, and you cannot wrong them. The only way for justice is when they revenge. So when you wrong a, a Fulani, you should expect revenge. And therefore, this is the cross of the matter why this problem is going around in a vicious circle. Because if you steal a cow, you should expect that you, know, you will not go free. And most often, what has also ex exaggerated the problem to be so expansive is that sometimes the, 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 the herders have certain target. When a car is stolen, they believe that it, is, uh, it must be somebody from this community. And they go to that community and slaughter everyone. Uh, that's, that's where it becomes really, really serious because innocent people die because people assume. And it's because there are certain communities which are targeted, certain communities which are in tension with the herder communities in Nigeria. Now, we've also seen where destruction of crops uh, contribute to the herder attacks. Now, when, when herders use their herd to destroy crops or they, 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 they use herders' herd to uh, feed on certain crops which, you know, or in the farmland. Now, what happened is that the, the farmers also, the farmers' communities are going to react. They will organize and react. I come from a community in Cameroon where we've witnessed this uh, in one incident where, you know, cattle destroy corn. The community organized itself went to the uh, herder community and started butchering people. And that really escalated into a disaster. The, there is also the issue of terrorism. Now, this is a big, this, I think for me, this is the biggest one. Because Boko Haram has been terrorizing everyone and they've been really using the, the, the herder issue to their advantage. Now, what, what Boko Haram does is that they go to communities, communities especially where you have a lot of herds or livestock, they, they, they cause havoc in that community, steal away or, or, or uh, uh, run away with uh, cattle or with uh, other livestock such as goat or sheep, which they finally traffic to other countries or they use uh, as uh, food or meat. And then there's the problem of kidnapping. Uh, this one in Nigeria is rampant. It's widespread everywhere. Now, in the areas where you have the herder issues, whenever there is a kidnapping, that always comes with revenge, and therefore that uh, has also contributed to triggering the problem to the, to the uh, extent that we have it today. Now, there is also assassination and murder, which I don't, I don't want to dwell on this one because I think it, it is uh, self-explanatory. Now, what we have also seen is that if you look at the, the, the cost uh, or the price uh, of cattle and goat, uh, you know, the, the increase, well, we've noticed that whenever we have increases in the price of meat, you know, these attacks are more common. So increases in the price of meat lead to increases in herder attacks. Why? Because when price of meat increases, 
you have more people who are going to be rustling cattle because they want to sell at these very exorbitant prices and make a lot of money from it. And that triggers herders to attack. Then the, 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 the other point uh, about Boko Haram, which I just want to uh, finish up this, our presentation, is Boko Haram regularly uh, attacks these communities, not because of any uh, uh, wrongdoing, but because it is for them a resource. Cattle rustling has provided a very lucrative financial, financial source for Boko Haram. So the financing of Boko Haram is sometimes done uh, from cattle rustling. And there, are, there, there have been some uh, estimates. I think one estimate put it that, uh, you know, uh, Boko Haram makes about, you know, close to uh, $2 million, $3 million uh, from this trade. Um, that has not been confirmed. We have no uh, empirical uh, study to confirm uh, this uh, estimate. But if you take, for example, the, the, the fact that uh, the cost of one cow in Nigeria is uh, between $300 and $500, you know, you, you could actually uh, agree with the estimate that, you know, this is a very, very lucrative uh, business and therefore one that Boko Haram relies on to finance its activities. So. Um, uh, this, is, this is the key, because when Boko Haram does the kidnapping or, or the, the, the rustling of cattle, many of the, 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 the cattle herders believe that, you know, it must have been people from uh, different communities and they go and attack those communities rather than attacking Boko Haram. Boko Haram has also used the cattle rustling or livestock rustling to traffic dangerous and sometimes illicit goods across borders. We've seen that with the trafficking in drugs. We've seen that with trafficking in, um, a, uh, in arms. So, and therefore, cattle rustling is a heavy uh, trade uh, that Boko Haram relies on for its activities. Uh, the movement members operate across Nigeria, Chad, uh, Cameroon, Benin, to some extent, where they, they've been exploiting the trade, uh, the, the trade in cattle in Benin, and uh, of course in Niger, where you know they've also been doing a lot of killings. Now, if you look at the government responses, uh, it has been really uh, disappointing because the Nigerian government has focused more on the fact that this is a problem caused by climate change. It is a problem caused by scarcity of land, or a problem caused by uh, 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 lack of uh, resources or poverty and so on and so forth. Uh, and therefore the responses have been to, uh, to address those issues. In some cases they've called for land redistribution, they've also called for the creation of grazing corridors, which indeed have been created in some state, but we have uh, not yet seen the benefit of this because uh, in, in some of those states where grazing corridors have been created, we still have uh, uh, herders attacks uh, going on. So to, in my view is that apart from uh, uh, very uh, limited incident where the government was sending troops and police to, uh, uh, to, to somehow bring order to a community facing herder attacks, they, they have really been no uh, um, government responses to the problem, which is very, very disappointing because this is a serious problem, but you seem to find some sort of complacency from government officials, if you look again, and this is the nature of the cattle uh, or the, uh, uh, the herder attacks or the, the farmer grazers dispute in Nigeria, in the sense that before herders or used to be mainly the Fulanis, but now it, they cut across. Most elite in Nigeria have cattle, they have uh, livestock, which you know um, uh, they, they, they use as a means of uh, raising funds for themselves. So, and therefore, uh, anything, they cannot take any decision that is going to affect, you know, the economy or which will affect the herders, uh, uh, which uh, makes it very, very difficult. So what we are then proposing here is that there should be a criminal justice approach. Nigeria needs to address, you know, the criminal uh, activities that often accompany herder attacks. And I believe if the, uh, if the government can carry out stringent investigation, robust investigation backed by intelligence, I believe that Nigeria can be able to bring this problem under control. But the way it is, it, it has wings and it's going to fly and sometimes it might fly too high. Let me leave it here.